Hi everybody, welcome to today's tutorial. So today we gonna we got a very exciting kind of graphic that we're gonna do. So it's mainly a watercolor style uh, render for your architecture plans and designs, which you can clearly show your uh, different uh, spaces that you've designed with different colors and different styles. So I've attached uh, the basic uh, brushes that we need to do. You can download them for free from the link in the description below. So what you need to know about installing these brushes are as for what I'm going to tell you now. So you just click the brush icon, then select the down drop arrow and select the settings icon in the, in the drop arrow. Then just go to the load brushes uh, icon, select that and then go to the folder where you download brushes and just select that file. So I've, I've attached three .abr files with the in the download link so just install them and then you'll get all of these kind of brushes for free uh, and just install them and then we'll continue on with the tutorial so just pause the video right now download the brushes install them and we can follow along and apart from that we need a basic plan so i'm going to use this kind of a residential plan to explain uh, how we can uh, do this watercolor render so let's start so let's uh, put the render in to photoshop just adjust it adjust it in terms of size i'm just gonna rotate it so that i get the perfect angle scale it up so that all the text is hidden all right now we'll just put a white base at the back Alright, so we can now kind of start off with the walls. So for the walls, I'm just uh, filling it up uh, with uh, just rectangular shapes, grey rectangular shapes on top of the base layer. So you see, I've just grouped them up. So as base and walls, so always work in groups. So it's very easy for you to organize your file and even to change stuff later on. So let me know if you want another tutorial on how to organize your photoshop layers for easy use. Alright so now I am just filling up the walls, with the, with just copying each rectangle and filling it up fast. So just using the rectangle tool. So I'm just I'm using a rectangle tool rather than using uh, the marquee when filling it with color so so that it's, I can even edit the rectangles later if I want to change the color. So always it's always better to use shapes rather than using a fill. And also if I want to delete a particular wall I can do that as well. So just fill in all the small walls, all your Alright, so I'm even doing the small walls, just, just copy them, you can even copy multiple walls at the same time. Okay, so it's almost done, few more of them, so we have some of them left, yeah, yes, so the walls are almost done, now let's start painting in the flow, flow so i'm just selecting all the floor areas so i'm just uh, making it a separate group called floor and uh, selecting all these areas of which i need as, as the same color so i like this 483 number brush so just select that we can even try out some other brushes so i'm just going to enlarge the brush and uh, start painting it in so the, the thing about watercolor is that you need to add a little bit of variety. So let's just pick a color, grey color, make it a little bit darker. And start painting. Yes. So these uh, gaps and these difference in light and dark shades is what makes it more interesting. So it, no need to worry, let's just let it be there. So one kind of flow is done. Now that we can start doing different colors for the deck and veranda area. So let's just paint that in as well. Select them and maybe choose a separate color. And we'll just kind of choose a dark purple 
So I'm just to go into the brush tool settings and just flipping the brush so that we get a little more variety in terms of the brush stroke. Alright. So let the brush strokes overlap. Creates a better effect. So I'm just changing the hue saturation, make it less less saturated so it goes with the gray. Maybe play with the colors a little bit. Yeah, I think I like it over okay. there. Now some of the alcoves are left, so let's paint them as well, make a new layer, we'll just rename it as alcove. And I think I'll paint them with a brownish color. So let's paint that in as well. Okay. Oh, wait. So the shades look really good. So now let's just you can fill the pagolas with the shape so I'm just going to take the shape tool go on the rectangle and copy it fast so yeah, copy the multiple multiple things you can make it so that they are different in this color as I'm just leaving them as outline alright now let's copy the whole group the goal on the other side and just copy the left over shape. Enlarging the vertical element and I'm going to copy all the vertical elements down. Alright, that's the good goal I've done. So, so we have all our fills inside, so now we just need a little bit of shadow. So we can remove wood for shadow so that we get a little bit of depth into the image. You can actually leave the image as is if you are kind of happy with the 2D kind of look. I like a little more depth to my plants. So, so in terms of shadows, what you guys need to know is this is that we need to select a particular direction where the sun light is coming from. So I'm just kind of uh, selected uh, for this tutorial that the sunlight is coming from kind of the right top of this uh, image so basically if the come so the shadows will be done according to that so if, if the right top was uh, is where the sunlight is coming from so you will notice that uh, what do you say the shadows will be on that surface that which it hits and on 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 that surface so all these areas will be where the shadows will be there. So just um, decide where your light is coming from and put the shadows according to that, the direction of the shadows. It's not that hard. Once you to kind of get used to it, you, you can do it really fast. It may be uh, a little new when you start it out. But don't worry, just keep uh, trying on more options and you'll get really quick with uh, putting and aligning the shadows to the direction you need. So you're going to quickly fill in the shadows. So make the shadows as dark as possible, not too dark. So you just go with little darkness so that you get a little more dark. So I'm just filling it on all the furniture. So in this tutorial I'm gonna leave all the furniture as white. So I'm just gonna understand where the shadow is gonna fall and just color them accordingly. that looks right about it so for the pergolas we can just add a drop shadow effect I'm just going to go to drop shadow effects and just going to adjust the settings so I'm going to angle it to the direction of sun we're choosing reduce the spread and make, give it a distance it's a little away from uh, the other angle as we reverse. Alright, so I will just reduce the spread on the side of the shadow and I'm going to make the distance a little bit away. So it's like a proper shadow. That looks almost right. 
and we just leave it at multiply uh, I think that looks the best so just leave it at multiply alright Okay, so for copying it for the, to the other one, just copy the layer style, go to the other group and paste the layer style. And we can just edit the layer style a little bit more. So let's uh, go to the top shadow option and edit it to what we need. Alright, let's just adjust the distance, the spread, and the size. can even add uh, shadows to the alcove areas so for that just go to create another shadow let's rename it as alcoves and we'll just take the marquee tool click M for marquee and we'll just uh, draw the outline of our shadow and what it's gonna look like and we'll quickly do it for all of the uh, creates kind of an effect of a shadow and shows where the light is going to come from the window so just hold shift and draw the different markies all right so since after that's done just uh, paint in the shadow again using your normal brush tool reduce your opacity to around 30 percent and just paint in the shadows yes Alright, but I think one of the shadows will look really good on, so we can kind of edit it. Uh, let's just give it a blur first, a small Gaussian blur. A little bit, this shadow looks a little bit odd, so let's uh, delete that part. That looks a little bit odd. All right, let's delete it off. Yes, now it looks much better. Okay, so let's get the paint sight in. So just select the brush, the watercolor brush, make it big, and let's just flip it a little bit and paint in the other parts. All right, that looks good for the sight. Now we can add in a little bit of the trees. So for the trees, I just uh, make a circular uh, marquee, vertical marquee, and just paint in green with the watercolor brush. So you can just so you get a custom tree. Yeah, that looks good. Now just um, you know twist it a little bit so it looks a little organic copy it and scale it so you get different kinds types of trees all right looks good now just copy all the trees around this side rotate a little bit to add some variety now again copy uh, these two these trees to wherever you want all right now that looks really good so for the final thing to add a little bit of glow to the watercolor and make it a little more organic so what you need to do is make a copy of the whole image that is by pressing Ctrl Shift Alt and E and then give it a little bit of Gaussian blur. After that just set, uh, set the blending mode to multiply and reduce the opacity to around 50-50%. You can even try it out, I have set it at 35, so something between 35 and 55 to sort of get that watercolor uh, glow. So you see the difference over there so that's it guys that was a quick tutorial on how to create really good watercolor renders so check out the brushes that i've sent in the video description yeah and that's all